company that was going to, or a team that would break some of the conventional rules that we find in the BBC. Um, and I think that's kind of, that's an interesting conundrum because the, the, there are lots of rules that you have to follow at the BBC when you're publishing content. You know, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with working at a broadcaster like the BBC. Um, but also what they want is doing things differently and ideas that other people might not have thought of. And I guess just um, not being afraid of trying new things as well. Any other follow-up questions? Sure. Um, if you're like creating content, like documentaries, like on Snapchat and things like that, um, do you think there's a like a future in TV? If you're trying to do it online, <coughs> well, I, well, for me personally, and this is my opinion, I have to say, um, <coughs> I think the definition of television is, is about to radically change. Um, I think I can see a future where you know it's it's actually about content and it's about the programs, loosely speaking, that you like kind of probably exist in quite an ethereal way across different touch points. So you might love, um, I don't know, you might love 13, for example, and your love of 13 is almost like media neutral. So you might watch watch a video demand, you might kind of follow a character um, <clears throat> on Twitter and you're doing that on your phone. You might play uh, a game as part of the story on your desktop. But I think I can see a lot of people, or especially young audiences, like they don't have a problem with that even now. And it feels like that's the way that it's going to go, that the stories will become uh, <clears throat> much more amorphous in the sense that they exist across all these different places. <coughs> right, okay. Who, uh, some of you don't have names on. So, what are your long term goals for Digital Gorillas? Who's the star? So, Esther. Um, that's an interesting question, I think, as well, because um, I suppose we're, we're definitely being a part of the BBC Birmingham story, and I think we're going to be uh, more closely aligned with that story as BBC Three moves to Birmingham. Um, I think our goals kind of are always changing because there's always new technologies to experiment, and it's probably quite difficult to say what I could. I couldn't tell you what I could see us doing like in two years because who knows what's going to happen in that kind of time frame, but. I think the, the main thing I think is that we um, continue to try and create content that um, other parts of the BBC aren't kind of unearthing because there is a lot of creativity and a lot of experimentation that's already happening within the BBC. Um, I think our focus and the fact that we've been able to work with BBC Three has given us um, somebody, you know, a direction if you like. So it's, it's really looking at how, how we can do that experimentation on behalf of that channel. Um, but we do do more for other channels, but it seems like probably the future for us is, is, is focusing more on, on that channel, working more closely with them, um, and seeing how their content changes, as it inevitably will. The like of follow-up questions. <laughs> Don't have that one. Uh, again, I've, I've no name on this one, but is Birmingham a good city to apply to, to have a good <coughs> this project? Uh, who's the staff? So it's a long list. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there's definitely a reason why we're here, and that is really about, uh, I guess, the size of the young audience that's based in Birmingham, and also the, the diversity of that audience. I think, um, you know, again, for, for BBC Three, but also for the BBC, you know, our ongoing goal is, is to reflect the audience in the content, you know, and your voices and your ideas. Um, in the content, that's really important. So, being in Birmingham allows us to, to plug straight into to you guys and to be able to connect with you guys. So that's yeah, that's key. Really. Yeah. Yeah, you found out the correspondence that you expected from Birmingham. And um, the correspondence in what in what sense? From the Birmingham news, let's say. Do you know what? I think it's something we're still working on. It's just sort of, and I think it's also probably something that could take a bit of time to bed in. So if we're quite new, and I think it's. it's it's a new project, yeah. I mean, I think one thing that's been really good so far, <clears throat> a lot of students have been involved in some of the, the research and testing and stuff that we've been doing. We've been trying to get call-outs for, for projects and stuff, but that's definitely a bit more of a work in progress. Um, but I think having you guys play with our content and tell us what you think of it <clears throat> is really important, and I think there'll be lots more of that happening going forward. Uh, Leaper, Destiny, and you have all got questions. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the bullet quiz might be on the 20th. Uh, how do you compare the opportunities to companies such as Amazon? 
such and such and then you have lots of legal things in it. So more important is how these are going to be considered. Because you want to create some products. Okay, yeah. Um, I guess like in the well, in the early days of the of the Nazis, the, the internet was brand new. So I think for, for me personally, I probably uh, got away with doing a lot of stuff because other parts of the agency that I worked at kind of either didn't have the expertise or they weren't interested. So which for me as an individual was brilliant because you know by putting together teams of people that could make things happen, they gave me a chance to kind of create quite a bit of work. But I think what's fascinating as well is that that doesn't happen for, for very long because the agencies catch up quite quickly. And even though, I mean, in Outland, it's still a massive challenge because they're still, they have models that are still based on certain TV advertising, you know, so, so their ability to adapt has actually been probably been quite slow because they're huge multinational organisations, but they're getting there now. Some of them are actually really quite good at it. I think probably the place where I actually kind of had the most creative freedom was when I worked at a smaller agency actually um, that specialised in film and entertainment marketing. And, and when I joined that agency, there was uh, like 15 of us, I think, in a, in a little warehouse space in Shoreditch. And then three, three or so years later, uh, when we sold the agency to an American advertising network, there were 70 of us. You know, and that grows basically to follow just really the appetite uh, for the internet and for content. Uh, to be created for the internet. So I think that's the one thing that's remained constant, and in fact it's probably growing, is, is uh, the importance of being able to create content for the internet. And it's never been more important. And, uh, and uh, I think there will always be, I, can, I can't see a time when there won't be jobs in that area, you know, either coming up with the ideas for what the content is going to be, helping to produce the content, either from a, a writing or a production or a technical point of view. You know, I think that's only going to continue. Yeah. Uh, what is the most rewarding thing about working with the students? Well, I think hearing what you think about stuff, I think, is, is, is really important, you know, and getting feedback, because I think it, it, might, it might look a little bit ironic to you, because I'm standing here saying I'm, I'm here to specialise in audiences, and I'm a 42 year old man. Uh, but you know, um, deep down, I still think I'm a child's body. But, but I think the, it, that's really important to get that feedback from you guys and to kind of have your voice in the content and to be able to, to see how it resonates with you. I think that's got to be the starting point. Um, obviously, you've not been on projects, so you've moved around to like, more audience. I'm like, you're that, and I'm just like, you know, 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 like, like I say, I think the, the university relationship is still quite new for us, really. We have to try and figure out the best way uh, to facilitate that. And I think we, we definitely um, want to assist. And, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of looking at how to facilitate it. You know, do we do placements within the team? Like, do we put briefs out? Um, you know, some, some the complexities to both of them that I think we need to kind of consider. But no, I, I definitely. It's, it's part of our unit is to, to have um, you know you guys representative in that team. So so that's only going to increase I think, as we go on. Yeah. How's working in different cities affected your output margin? Yes. Um, I mean, it's, that's quite hard to say. I mean, I think different cities have a, have a different take on digital. I mean, I think it probably, uh, so far, like, like uh, London's a beast when it comes to the economy. I think everybody appreciates that. Um, but there's a lot that's actually happening to try and change that and to try and kind of spread uh, business opportunities and investment across the whole country. You know. The DC are a big part of that. I think the government are trying to do the same, same kind of thing. So I think it is kind of hard to compare and contrast. I mean, I think probably Birmingham and Manchester are probably actually quite similar cities in the sense that they're building digital capabilities. Uh, I think probably the challenge is really like in these early days, I think it is all about persisting, you know, and probably being quite stubborn and, and actually not always looking down to London, but, but focusing on what, what, what these cities like. 
can do this different and to, and to, and to keep going and to keep harvesting the town. I think what is fascinating is the Birmingham, uh, obviously because I know, I know the university a little bit more, but the fact that you have got courses as diverse uh, within, within BCU that cover different aspects of digital uh, production, content creation, technology, you know, surely it seems, it doesn't seem too illogical the fact that if the business is to tap into that a little bit more, then it would grow, um, you know, the output here. So I think anything that we can do to be a part of stimulating that in whichever way we can, I think, um, we'd, love to, we'd love to do it, you know, it feels like an important mission. I want sort of in the way, but it still needs to keep going. Definitely. Um, so, so you decided to join this and do you find this challenging? Yeah, really challenging, really challenging. I think, especially like a blank canvas at the BBC. So, you've got, you know, I was new to the BBC anyway, so coming into the BBC being told okay you can try and create this team we have a bit of a skeleton strategy but it's up to you but then looking at the complexity of the organization uh yeah it's kind of mind-blowing right? because we have to try and align stakeholders get projects going you know some people have got their own agendas and their own project plans and stuff and, and trying to get our team plugged into into that in a way where it could still be a little bit rogue and it could still be gorilla but a lot of practical things still need to happen, you know, if you're making a project, you need to sell it to somebody, you need to have a conversation with them, you need to pitch it to them, you know, you need to build those relationships. Um, so yeah, so I think the Blank Canvas was, was exciting, but also challenging because it's still had to connect into the BBC. Uh, in your taste of conference, you mentioned the next generation of content. Um, what should you do to how would you use that about? Well, I mean, strangely enough, I think the next generation of content is actually already here. You know, I think uh, when you're looking at social media and, and the, the evolution of those channels, especially in the last couple of years, I think with the way that they've embraced video production and, and video content, um, it's, it's already here. And I think the next generation is maybe just a perceptional thing because I think for some people who are still uh, quite traditional in their outlook, it is the next generation already using it isn't at all it's just for those people and again this is part of the reason why my, my team exists and i'm sure if we were to go around and talk and i know that we found this from some of the research we've conducted like not a lot of younger audiences watch television in the same way some people don't watch it at all you know appointments of you the younger audiences you know sitting down uh at you know six o'clock on saturday night like, that's a massive rarity you know you just don't do that anymore so I think that's that's the thing that we're trying to do is trying to to join the dots between what people think is the future and actually making it more relevant now because we're already doing this kind of stuff now. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, what would you learn from your trip to Sweden? Uh, yeah, so we did. Um, it was part of Hyper Island actually. I think it was like a it was a strategy course looking at the dynamics of teams, and I think what's kind of interesting, I suppose, is that looking at how every team is built up of individual members, you know, and I think what's fascinating is that teams have to harmonize, they have to come together, get to know each other, uh, and then they can then they can start working on their app. And you'll probably find this in the teams that you work on when you first come together, like you don't really know each other, you know, and you kind of have to sort of find the balance in, in getting to know each other, and also what you can do together as you produce work. As a project team, so I think that was one of the interesting things was was just how important personalities and characters and stuff are when it comes to creating like multi skilled teams. Um, how would you say content like, um, itself is different uh, when BBC is a TV channel and like, that's really? Uh, so for BBC Three, yeah. Um, it, well, I guess I mean I think like thirteen is probably a really good example. And also, I mean, I guess the stuff on, on Snapchat. I mean, these content shapes are, are, were unheard of before those platforms were created. You know, I think TV was, you know, 30, 60 minute chunks. Uh, and, and that's what it was, you know. But nowadays, I guess this is what I mean. I think probably TV um, as a title, as a way of describing what could be seen as programs could change because there's no reason 
why the stuff that we're doing on Snapchat is still a program. We know the documentaries that we're making are still programs, but the actual shape of it, the fact that it's created in these staccato 10 second kind of pieces um, is completely new. You know, and that's also completely new to the commissioners who work in the BBC, who also are kind of getting their heads around the fact that they're going to start commissioning this kind of work, you know, and when they come to create a program, you know, their definition of what they're going to output is probably going to change significantly. So they're, they're report, they're, it's important, I think, for, for those uh, those guys to kind of look at these experiments because it's all about learning, I think, in that sense. Um, what exciting new kinds of prospects aside from the ones that we're going to do? Well, I think, I mean, Snapchat is the problem that we're looking at at the moment, I think, in different stories that you can tell on those platforms. And, uh, I mean, the other thing that I'm interested in is also storytelling that ties some of these platforms together. So, I mean, and this is also like a question that I'd be interested to hear a bit more about from you guys, because I kind of think that if I was uh, a young audience member, I wouldn't have any problem with, um, you know, seeing a piece of content on, on Facebook Live, uh, seeing a stream there, then going onto Snapchat and following events that might happen over the course of an evening, and then going onto YouTube later and seeing other video content on YouTube, then maybe joining a blog forum and talking about the content that they've found. And that sort of stuff really interests me as well. It's like, because I, I mean, again, I don't know if the best way of measuring this, but do you move across different social platforms? Do you, do you move quite seamlessly? Is it sort of, do you want to put your hands up if you think, yes, you do that, so you can kind of see? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's really kind of reassuring, because that's, the sort of stuff I'm kind of getting a bit more interested in. I think that's probably more uh, dialing up the sophistication of some of the things that we're trying to do and the stories that we'll tell. But it will all be about telling stories. I think that's the thing that we, we're not going to change um, the, our approach. You know, the, the, the BBC is here to kind of, you know, inform, educate and entertain. And I think that's what we're trying to do across those platforms. Do you know what? It's a real challenge actually because you you almost have to put your flag in the sand as a content producer and take a few risks because your platform could change as you're producing your content, or it could get uh, well. I guess the platform sometimes change themselves, you know, which is also a challenge. So you know, the Snapchat stuff that we've just been doing recently. So Snapchat changed the way that interface worked about three days into us launching our project, which changed the way that our content was seen. So there are things like that that you, I guess you just have to have a bit of a thick skin to, because if you were constantly worried about platforms becoming irrelevant or platforms changing, you might not do anything, because you'd be like, oh, it could happen at any time. But I, I just feel like a team like ours just needs to be trying stuff and to be quite fluid about that. I mentioned that I think follow up questions from here on, and I'll mention a couple of things that um, I were following up on. So, um, when 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 did it start with this ago? Was it about two, two and a half years ago? So, yeah, so I joined about two years ago, and then the full team have been in place for about a year and a half so far. And it's it's kind of a, a three year contract, is it? Or? So it was been a three year project, yeah, um, so far. But I think there's, at the moment, there's every sign that that's going to be continuing. And I think that we're going to become, uh, yeah, uh, uh, more closely aligned with the BBC Birmingham story around digital innovation and audiences, which seems to be a, a bigger story that's kind of coming out. And um, obviously, the Academy's now here um, as part of, of part of BBC Birmingham. And um, within a relatively short amount of time, BBC Three will be here as well. Um, so, more people think that, 
questions about that. What would, what would your advice be to these guys? You know, they're four weeks into the start of their the, the, um, degree, three year degree. What, what would your advice be to them in terms of how they use that time? And make stuff. The best way to learn is by doing, you know, make, make things and collaborate with different people, experiment on your own, and get busy and make stuff, I think, because that's the best way to learn. And also, it's surprising how many things you take with you from one project to the next. And, and don't be afraid of, of it not working out, because, you know, you're going to be a million times more critical um, than other people will be of, of your stuff. And I think it's just good to get it out there to see how it forms, you know, okay, some people want to like it, but sometimes you can't, you know, really, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I think definitely give it a go would be the main call of that call to action I would give you guys, definitely. Yeah, I think that work in the project, um, is anyone qualified from Birmingham or is it just there, is it? Yeah, yeah, and most of the people actually were already here in Birmingham that came to join our team, yeah, so, and a few people moved to Birmingham to be part of it. Um, you know, what I'd like to see, um, the fact that you have to set like, the adopters in the same way, like, what you're looking for in the future, and, like, do you have to set that story for it? Yeah, definitely. Well, I think it's, I mean, I think what's interesting is it has to be, like, audience focus. You know, I think the idea that, obviously, we've got online, I think in my mind is actually, like, it was a stroke of genius because. Exactly. Why, why would you not leave all of your content online when that's where your audience is? I think it's a bit harder um, for older audiences because you wouldn't necessarily do it for you know, a 60 plus audience because it wouldn't make the same sense for them. But, but what is interesting, I think, is the fact that even though the older audiences are using things like social media, and Facebook in particular, like somebody described to me the other day that like, the phase that we're going through now, like social media for a lot of people, is the internet. You know, they use apps and, and search with, you know, through shopping and stuff like that, but they spend an incredible amount of time in social media. And I think that for those older users, Facebook might be the one that they may be on as well. So if you're, you might be watching, uh, I don't know, like Country File, and then, then you can then go and see a Facebook Live broadcast by those services, <coughs> and that would make sense. Um, but, but moving it all online for those guys. Go to more different social media platforms, so say they've done Instagram, and Instagram, Snapchat, I think Instagram would be a potential for one as well. Yeah, yeah, well, we have done um, some bits on Instagram already. We did um, a cooking program on Instagram to help launch Beauty Foods um, Instagram account called No Think Dinners. It was supposed to be like it was kind of all uh, quick recipes, healthy recipes, but quick ones that you could do if you were in a rush. But it was all they were all produced. Uh, almost like slideshows, so that it was about well, fitting the content within 10 seconds. So, which was a nice kind of experiment. So, um, yeah, we have done other bits and bobs across other platforms. I guess, like Snapchat, this happens to be the stuff that I'm focusing on, though, which is crazy yeah. why I'm talking about it so much. But, yeah, we've done stuff on Twitter, we've done stuff on Facebook. Um, yeah, weird really enough, it's interesting when people talk about Vine. Like, I probably have seen the dip off in Vine as well, where we haven't actually been asked to do much on. Vine at all, it's all been replaced by Instagram and um, Snapchat. Uh, the thing that is getting increasingly more interesting, I suppose, is like, um, like putting programs on things like Facebook. So, like Facebook Live, for example, you know, people are maybe put interviews and stuff, but you know, why can't we put programs into that format? You know, I'm sure that's just around the corner. Um, what have been the, the biggest failures? What, what things have gone wrong that you weren't That's interesting, actually. Yeah, I mean, I suppose um, sometimes the technology can't always do what you want it to do, um, and that can be challenging. I know we had a we had a project um, that we wanted to do um, with 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 tweets actually, and kind of powered. Well, it was a, a a project that was out, I think it was actually sponsored on Twitter, that was powered by tweets. Uh, that you could have people responding to a hashtag or, or tweeting a hashtag and, and have that influence something. I think at the time, 
some of the stuff that was being used was to um, like remote control objects in the real world. I think was one of the projects um, that, that we saw. And we had a, a project that we were interested in, and it was actually more just to cover narrative of a story-based one. So the idea was that what if you could um, you could see a story uh, that basically had a big impact ending, and you had multiple choices and people could tweet which ending they wanted, um, and that could then play out and affect the ending. Um, and so we wanted to do something like that, but actually there was a problem with the API that it couldn't deliver volume of tweets. Um, it could have a few tweets control something, but because the Twitter API could only send so much information at a certain point in time, it just couldn't be idea. But it took a while to get to that point and we crafted the story and we figured it all out before we realised that that would, that would work. Um, but that's not such a bad thing, I think it's kind of part of what the team is there to do. Um, and ultimately you sort of have to make a little bit of a commitment to the concept before you can see whether it's going to fail or not. Um, and some things will also turn out a little bit differently to what you expected. And I think that's also not such a bad thing. The big challenges that we often face with our work is, is um, some, some of the KPIs that we often have to talk about you know, uh, could get connected quite quickly to reach. So how many people have seen this particular experiment? And I think that's why a traditional measure that a lot of people in television can equate with, you know, six million people watching on TV program, how many millions of people are going to get online. Um, and increasingly, like, like, it's not all about reach because the, the levers that you have to pull on social media, say if you want reach on Facebook, you need to have to pay for advertising because that's the only way to make that marketing work in your favour. So there are certain things that are outside of what is the actual experiment that affects reach and it shouldn't stop you from doing the experiment because sometimes you're going to find out more about how the content performs, how the audience engages with it. And I read a really nice article recently uh, by one of the big social media agencies saying social media content is all about um, immersion and engagement. It's got nothing to do with news at all. And more people need to get into that frame of mind that this content is all about those two things. Uh, which I thought was actually a, a breath of fresh air, but a lot of people will, you know, they like big numbers to be able to say to their bosses, whoever their bosses may be. 10 million people saw this, but like how important that is going forward, I think is a, is a bit questionable. Hey, I should explain KPIs are key parts of the thing. Yeah. So how do you measure it to your success, etc. Yeah. Uh, uh, I should talk about the ones after. Um, you know how you said about like different platforms? Um, do you and your team ever like consider things like, for example, like Periscope, like kind of went out? And then, like, would you ever think to like try and bring something back to sort of things? Because, like, at the moment, you're working with Snapchat, and Snapchat's yeah. a hit, and that's great. Um, but, like, things like Periscope, that was a hype for about a few months and yeah. then died down. Like, do you guys can do things like that, and it's like live. Well, we've I mean, funny enough, we did a Periscope experiment um, with a project about a year and a half ago called Ramadan and um, Den, which was a social media broadcast from sunrise to sunset across a number of different social platforms that aims to kind of capture uh, the spirit of Ramadan. Um, it had a lot of content that was created by the audience. And we had some Periscope stuff that we did. Um, I guess at that time, uh, it was a challenge to do it from a BBC perspective because at BBC um, hadn't done a lot of live streaming with, with <coughs> social media technologies. And I think ours was the first to be fully complied in terms of editorial policy being happy that we were going to do it, that we had a strategy for how we were going to moderate it and how we were going to deal with that side of it. Um, so it actually provided quite a lot of learnings to the organisation and gave the organisation quite a bit of confidence. Even though Periscope died and Facebook, you know, live is now kind of here. Um, but some of the learnings I think that we did that we have from Periscope have been taken over onto the other platform. But I don't think we necessarily would go back to Periscope. We don't have a, um, we're more interested in where the audience is than what the technology can do, I think. <coughs> I, um, I read an article in like, uh, Mass Media Inquirer a few years ago, and he said that uh, the work of BBC funded people to look to the um, content creators to go find that. Um, I mean, I, I can't speak for Penn Lynch. Um, I guess, I mean, it's, it has, I can only speak from my own experiences, and I think the people that I've worked with 
um, <clears throat> have been really open-minded. I mean, the, the BBC is, in, in some respects, you know, a quite traditional organisation, you know, having certain purpose <coughs> to, to fulfil. Um, but also, I think there are a lot of people that want to take risks in experimenting with new, with new content. Um, the project that we did for, for Find a Girl happened because the exec producer, Elizabeth Kilgallup, um, who, who also has a brilliant drama reputation for producing a show that I need for her, uh, actually came to me and said, hey, I want to do something uh, with her team. But originally, she didn't have any expectations, but knew in order to kind of make it work for, for a young audience, there was an opportunity. Um, but just for somebody very, very senior, you can see who was really up for learning. And even when she was talking to me about the process, like when she was at the back she said, like, it was quite scary because when you were starting to talk to me about some of the things that you were going to do, I had no idea what you were talking about. And, um, and it was only when we got to the end of the process that, that actually it all made perfect sense. And it was quite simple when you explained these different shades of content and how it's going to work. Um, so yeah, so I mean, like I say, I can't, I can't speak to these days of differences, but I think that there are lots of people within the organization that are able to do these things. Um, Mark asked me on Snapchat, is more just for like showing photos and stuff. How are you kind of sure that the audience will use it for programming? Because I know like Sky News have got like a little tab where you can you know what to do. Me personally, I don't ever look at anything like that. So, how are you sure that people will do it? I would not. I think, mm -hmm. um, and I suppose, like we we're using our own native channel, so I suppose we're trying to um, nurture an audience and, and hopefully give them content that they would like. Um, I guess the reason why we have some, the reason why we're trying it, I suppose, is because we've seen other people who are doing it. So, I think Reddit <coughs> is a really good example where. Um, obviously, they're, they're, they're creating a very specific type of content um, in terms of the editorial direction. Um, but we can see that it's successful. So I think that gives us the confidence to try it. Um, I'm sure what will happen is that with all of these experiments, like you'll find over time, like an even round, where we'll try some behind the scenes stuff, we'll have some stuff that features talent in shows talking to the audience, we'll have some program stuff, being a bit more of a balance of those things that, that, that people like. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, the future is always a really difficult one to answer because, like, who knows what the future has in store? Uh, you know, some people say to me, like, could you talk to me about what's the net, what's, what are the future technologies? And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, I think so much stuff is happening right now, and the future has probably never been closer, you know, because the future is like tomorrow, and somebody can turn around and say, hey, look, you know, here's a new piece of technology, a new piece of care. So I guess the future is actually quite short. Like, I suppose, like, I'm excited about what might be around the corner tomorrow or the week after, or, but, but any further than that, it gets quite abstract, which is like, who you knows, like, I suppose, like, well, I don't know how many years ago, like two years ago, two years ago, there was no Snapchat. Uh, Ten years ago, there was no Facebook. So a lot happens really quickly. You know, like how BBC is quite traditional and how you feel, obviously, branch and Do you think eventually you're going to lose the tradition because um, you've got a lot of like the younger crowd now instead of like, obviously, you still have the old people that watch BBC on TV and stuff like that, but do you think you're eventually going to like move away from tradition? Um, I, I think just definitions will change, you know, of what constitutes traditional, and I think, um, I think people will always want like content in different forms and I think what people might call TV might end up being called long form, you know, or medium form, or you know, there'll be different phrases that are just used for it. And I think um, there'll always be a, a call for that content. And I think that will happen quite gradually. And the, I think what's kind of interesting I suppose is like you're probably already getting um so like sport for example, like they're a really <coughs> good example but they're massively cross platform in what they do and, and actually they probably have um, all the audiences that follow them on Twitter and use content on Twitter and then and then also watch the TV shows and stuff. So I don't think it's necessarily it's not going to be one for the other, but maybe just some of the definitions might change a little bit.
So I guess like creativity for me has always been about well having an idea of being able to articulate it. I think they're, they're the two kind of important things. I think the thing that is um, this is not for anybody who is creative is, is, is the notion that you know no one person is an idea. When it comes to creating digital content, you need to collaborate with people, um, and that's where it, where it does become kind of challenging getting different people to coalesce around a single idea and people to be able to bring their own skills, but, but somebody still needs to be able to drive that idea. Um, you know, there are the challenges I think around being creative is, is being able to uh, either drive a concept or see a concept in somebody else and be able to nurture that for somebody else and then hopefully try to kind of um, foster an environment where people can come together as a collaborative team to deliver that work. So, so there's a mixture of ideas and management, I think, in that sense. Um, but the main thing I would say that if, if you want to, so I started off as a, I was just, I started off as a hybrid producer, creative role. Um, but having ideas and wanting to get them made was the thing that held me forward. And because of the early days, there weren't a lot of people who were doing it, and the agencies that I worked for gave me the space to, to be able to do it. Um, so yeah, so that's, I haven't answered the first one. So what was the second part of your question again? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the crazy thing, I suppose, to try and respond. Like I say, it probably seems a bit weird, like, coming from a 42-year-old man saying, like, I, I'm interested in these things. But I've kind of always been interested in it, I think. You know, I started off um, working in a basement with two of my mates, probably, like, 10 minutes after they switched the internet on, making uh, websites for DJs and clubs. Uh, I've always been into music and recently bought myself a little pair of techniques decks to go and play on and I kind of I don't know call myself a traditionalist in any way. I'm always interested in what is what is uh, new. And also I guess I'm kind of always a, I'm just a fan of a lot of the genre stuff that your audience is like as well, you know crazy to want to see things like strange things and I'm gonna be the first in the game for for watching the next Star Wars film and all of these things that hasn't changed in me at all. And now I've got young children as well, and I get a chance to do it twice almost. So, if that's any kind of answer, <laughs> I think there's, there's so many behind you. Oh, sorry. Um, you mentioned earlier there are lots of jobs in the market that they could so find your content limited to do so. If you have an idea and they say, no, that's not, I um, do you know what? You have to be thick-skinned and incredibly persistent at times, um, because there's uh, there can be a lot of reasons to, or a lot of ways to say no, um, and I think that's probably the biggest challenge is kind of is being a little bit stubborn and kind of going, look, let's give it a try. You know, being able to massage some of those conversations and maybe bring people with you a little bit, because um, that's probably not a challenge for my team. It's probably it's definitely a challenge for me because. I find myself jumping forward a lot. I can see the end product quite clearly in my mind. But a lot of the people, even that we might need to bring along from a stakeholder point of view, like they, 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 they don't live inside my head and they need to understand, okay, uh, here's an explanation of why it might be good and take them on a bit more of a journey. Um, but that's also the exciting bit as well because I can say from my experience with working with the executive on the drama, a lot of people find that quite exciting because it's everyone wants to learn. So there's a positive side to it as well. Okay. Okay. Any yes. um, it is a challenge, yeah. I mean I think it's definitely a challenge. Um and I think we, I mean, in my thoughts moving forward, and um, yeah, I have been thinking about how to repurpose some of the content. Um, I think that you are also seeing people um, who are doing projects on Snapchat and um, who are also archiving and filming their videos. Yeah, exactly. So, which I think is really interesting. And also, I'm fascinated uh, with, the, with the whole idea of uh, watching a video that's vertical and also like watching what might be a 30 minute video 
after it's been deposited together from the existing on Snapchat. So it's these 10 second moments that then can exist as a film that might be half an hour long. Now, when you watch that back and you see that as vertical video, for a lot of traditional filmmakers, they would just freak out. They'd be like, that's horrible, you know, it's breaking the rules, but I think it's fascinating. You know, I think also it's really original because when you're watching that content, there's nothing like it anywhere else. How are you think Birmingham as a as a as a hub for me with like Mexican Supreme coming to here? You came here a couple of years ago, we had me came here in the last year or so. Um so there's a lot going on. How, how do you see the next few years in Birmingham? Uh is there any other things you know going on? You know, what is it about then? Um well, Channel 4 possibly. Yeah, well, there has been a river of that. I mean, I don't know any more about that. But I mean, <clears throat> I think um, there will be a process of bedding all of these things in. You know, I think that's going to be inevitable. And that will take a little bit of time, too. I know that I think the talent pool of the ATC is going to be of immediate interest, you know, to, to, to BBC3. And they're going, to, they're going to want to have people that they can work with who are living in the city, you know, content makers and social media experts. Um, you know, journalists, producers, they're going to want to meet people who can be part of the team that exists in them. So I think that's, that's going to be something incredibly positive. Um, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to blossom as the team gets established, but I think that's definitely the outcome that everybody wants is that the talent that's going to use the organisations like ECU and will have, an, will have a way of getting involved with the cases like ECU. Yes. <coughs> Is there anything else that you've got to say that we have? Uh, I'd love to know what you think of our Snapchat takeover at the moment. And if, like, by all means, kind of take my email address on board and send me some feedback. I mean, I think the one thing, actually, or even like, would you be interested if we were to have a session where we could go through and show you the stuff that we've created? Because obviously, to your point about it coming into the that might be something actually that would be really good. Is if I could set up a session with you where I show you all the stuff that we've created on Snapchat and get some feedback <coughs> in terms of the stuff that we've created and then what you think of it, that would be incredibly useful. Thank you very much. Okay. I think there's no more questions there. I know you've gone by quarter class. So. And what, what's, what is the um, username on Snapchat? So it's just um, uh, BBC3, as in T H R E, and obviously all one word. So you'll find it there. But yeah, well, please get on, have a look, uh, check it out. But yeah, it'd be good just to see if you have to represent some of that to you, just to see. Because we're trying different things, and we started off with quite a fun and playful um, craft concept. This film's challenge I've been painting, you know, the kind of bombs and rain on their face and all of this kind of stuff. But now we're changing tact. There's been some nice comedy content that's gone up there. Uh, we've had documentary stuff which has been great as well. And then we've got a horror project coming up next week as well. There's also going to be some content that's going to go up there. And uh, that's going to tie into um, that's you know the real Doctor Who show that's coming out. So yeah, there's going to be content that's going to go up around that as well. So if you're a fan of that and you want to find out more about that, go and have a look at that as well. Just a quick kind of opinion slash question. Over on Facebook last month, I think there was a Doctor Who countdown to a small announcement. And I know that I've really ignited interest amongst my friends who maybe haven't watched Doctor Who for three or four years, whilst I, I see myself as quite a big fan. And I just think I'd love to see more, maybe, class and Doctor Who promotion across all the social medias, because I know there's a lot of potential fans who just maybe are out for me. Okay. That's interesting, yeah. Because I think, I mean, that's, that is really interesting. I mean, I, I um, don't work on, on Doctor Who, but I know there's a digital team within the BBC that does quite a lot of stuff and it's quite advanced. Um, so it's interesting. I think there'll be there'll, there'll be a lot of stuff happening around right, as it goes out. I think it's always when the shows are kind of being produced, there's always a challenge about how much do you reveal in the room because you just know, you can get a little nervous about people getting bored of it before it even kind of comes out. So I think maybe people. Um, but, but yeah, maybe check it out because there might be stuff that might kind of satiate your appetite as, as it actually launches. Uh, yeah, the only thing that I have is that 
Guys, if you want to take a uh, ten minute break, um, and when we come back, I want you to um, we'll, we'll have a news conference essentially.